All right, here we are, my friends. This is your personal record, the show where I talk to people about collecting records, about music, and about anything else that basically comes to mind. But we do try to stick to music and collecting. That said, today on episode nine, we have got a very, very, very special guest for you right here. Now, friends, the resume is huge, but we're just going to talk a little about his band, Exumer. Friends, I want to welcome to the show Mem Von Stein, the voice of Exumer. Mem, how you doing? Good, man. How are you? I can't complain. I mean, given the times, the fact that I'm sitting in a room full of records. and that much better than that. It, it, I mean, I'd rather be, you know, working outside. But all right, that said, that said, we, we take what we can get, right? 100%. Wow. So how you been? Good, man. I mean, I'm going through the same thing like everybody else, you know, hunkering down at home. I did get uh, my two dose, uh, two doses with the vaccine. So I'm good with that. Um, that was actually done uh, all wrapped up uh, beginning of February. So I feel a little better. Um, still do the same thing, though, you know, the whole bit with the mask and everything else. But, you know, it's gotten a little more comfortable. Oh, you got a little visitor. Yeah, that's well, cool. you know what it is? Once the camera goes on, she thinks she's a webcam girl. Oh, okay. That's so cool. she, like, senses that camera on, and then we'll just start posing and, and you know. Awesome. She's cool. So it is what it is, you know. We, we, yeah. we, as long as she doesn't hop up there when a record is on. Right, you know? right, right. But, yeah, I got the second dose also. I'm, I'm totally in the clear on that. Very and, cool. um, you know, hopefully things will start opening up soon, and we don't know. Yeah, so... Yeah, I mean, I'm not, so when this whole thing started, I kind of like realized that we're going to be sitting at home for a while. And that goes the same with, for my band. So we came up with these contingency plans where we said, you know, let's not even fantasize about going on the road, uh, back on the road in 2021. Let's just shift all our plans into 2022. So, and that's what I've done with my personal life as well, you know, so I have, usually I'm away, uh, I, you know, because of the band and personally, I go to Europe a lot. Um, I haven't been anywhere <laughs> for, a, for a year and change now. Um, so, but that's cool. You know, so we just got to buy more records, I guess. <laughs> that's basically what it boils right. down to. Now, Exumer came out with a record, uh, Hostile Defense, in 2019. Yeah, Hostile you- Defiance. Hostile defiance. What did I say? Yeah, right. Hostile defiance. Yeah. Hostile defiance. Now we got to right. start the entire interview over. Right, uh, right. Hostile defiance in 2019. And did you tour at all? Did you? Oh yeah. Okay, so you did tour it, and then 2020 hit, and it basically all went to crap. So what we did was we um, split the touring for. It was released in April of 2019, and we toured in Europe. Uh, all throughout that year, basically. Uh, We did, uh, we supported it in the spring, went back for summer festivals and then did a a three week tour through Europe. Um, And then the idea was to come to the States and do the same thing or at least do one leg in May of 2020. That, you know, fell. That's right when it hit the fan, right? The thing though is um, we got lucky er than most bands because we were able to promote the record at least for the European market. And now um, now we just have to write a new record. That's just the reality because, uh, and we're gonna, we're actually starting and um, to collect uh, riffs and ideas and I pretty got pretty much the concept down for the album. And um, so we're gonna record it probably at the end of the year and then look for a, a springish, um, release date in 2022 and by that time I'm hoping we can actually tour again and I mean not like these you know people try are trying and tried in the past to like put these you know semi shows with like uh, half the audience it really does not translate to our music I mean if you have like music where people just kind of chill out or mellow out or whatever but I mean it's high intensity it's thrash metal so the whole idea of it is high energy. So if you put out that energy on, on stage and you don't get anything in return, it's going to make it a real 
hard battle to fight. So we're just said, you know, forget about that. You know, I, I don't want to do it. I, I really don't want to do it. Yeah. And um, so we're just going to wait. And um, and if if it's not all the way open by 2022, uh, let's say in the spring, um, it definitely has to be uh, uh, by the by the fall. So and then we'll just take it from the fall on out. Right. But, you know, that's the plan. I think it's a good plan. Uh, we're a metal blade. That was, that'll be our fourth metal blade record. And, um, and I think, I mean, they were on board with it too. They, they weren't like, oh my God, what are you doing? So, um, you know, so all good. All good. Right. Yeah. I mean, you know, like thrash metal, similar to the things that I do when I'm on stage swallowing swords or bending nails, ripping phone books and yeah. stuff, you know, there's an energy that you have with the audience and the audience is, you know, really kind of shooting out back to you. Absolutely. And, I mean, I've done some Zoom shows and I right. find that there's no connection with the audience. And I mean, what I've had to do just personally is do the Zoom show and then open it up to like question and answer. Right. right. Because that's where the connection happens when the people who are watching on Zoom who are, you know, I mean, you're performing to a flat screen and you don't know what's right. behind. You can see the comments in the chat, but it's not, you know, it, it just doesn't hit. And then when I do the question answer afterwards, that's when the people that's when they have a voice and they can be part right, of right, right, right. even though the show's technically over, but they feel like they're part of the show. And that's you know where I get that connection as well. So it's it's right. a weird thing now. Have you done any? Yeah, I can't. I, any online? I can't stuff? do that. No, nothing online. No, no, no. We didn't do anything. Um, it's also I live here here, meaning in uh, on Long Island, New York. And um, our um, bass player lives um, part time in the city, part time in Jersey, and the rest of the band is in Germany. So right. we would have to travel to Germany. Tony and I would have to go to Germany, rent, I mean, get into our rehearsal space, which is there, yeah. and then, um, you know, hunker down and do something. But it's just too much of a, of a, to do, <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's too much of an investment, quite frankly to just sit down and do like a online zoom session or like anything of that magnitude. It's just not, and we're, it also is sort of too strange. It's, it's different. Like people say, Oh, well, haven't you done video shoots in the past? It's the same thing. No. Yes. And no. Yes. It's kind of like you're acting, but you know, it's only for five minutes. Oh, well, it's, it usually is a day or and a half. Um, but you're capturing a five minute clip or a four minute clip or whatever, right? So it's very segmented. It's very focused and driven to achieve a goal, which then, you know, when at the end of it, you have a product, right? Or you can use that to produce, uh, to promote your product. This is completely different. So it's just putting out your energy and this is going out in the ether and there's nothing coming back to you. And there's no life participation. Like the participation in our shows is a huge element of, 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 of the show. You know, people don't just look at us and, and watch us like in a movie theater. It's they participate. Right I mean, and, you know, it's the whole thing. And um, so I, I was against it. Everybody was against it, basically. And I, I applaud everyone who, you know, who done the quarantine shows. And like I seen stuff like the Cromax did something early on. And um, our friends from Destruction did some stuff. Like I see that, and I applaud them. Don't get me wrong; I think it's it's fabulous that they're actually staying active. It's just that other bands have chosen not to do it, and we're just one of those other bands. And it's you know, it really is to um, keep our spirits up and not to you know be um, bogged down by the whole thing because it's it's pretty depressing if you think about it. And uh, for people who are active like us, you know, when we re re reunited in 2008, we made a very conscious decision to be an active band, not a throw throwback, you know, uh, playing a couple of big festivals uh, once every two years and that's it. We said, no, we're going to put out records, we're going to go on, on the road and build the band back up with, you know, with a bit of a head start from the 80s. And, um, but that was the idea and we kept to that. So to kind of like go, go back on our word to ourselves 
it would be too depressing. So right. that's right. where we're at. That makes a world of sense. So now let's get into wreckage. Yes. All right. So, I mean, uh, now, yeah. I've been following you on Instagram for a while. And it seems like there is a never ending supply of records. I mean, you're constantly holding up. There's never a repeat. It's always something. And sometimes yeah. I, I don't Rarely. remember seeing a repeat. And um, yeah, right, I mean, right. it seems like most of the collection is metal and jazz. And that's an interesting one. It's, it's a, so, so let, I mean, let, I, I want yeah. to so, hear about that. Yeah. All right. So it actually, I have a lot more other genres. I just don't get to play them as much because now I'm heavily into jazz. Uh, the last two or three years, I've been just going ape shit with it, you know. But I started way back. Like I started actually maybe 25, 26 years ago to actively buy jazz records. And, um, and then recently, seven, eight years ago, about, no, eight years by now, I got started to getting into Japanese pressings. And at this point, I reached a, um, a point where I have like all my favorite priest records as Japanese, all my favorite maiden, everything that, you know, you can collect and, you know, I, I kind of collected all the, the ones that you, that I feel, all the Sabbath, all, everything that I think I need as, as a whole collection. And then I was like, all right. Then I started getting into the Japanese jazz records. And that's basically why, why you see a lot of um, jazz records, mostly from Japan, but not exclusively. I'm buying a lot of Blue Note reissues that are, they came out with a um, tone poet. Um, series, which is amazing. Uh, very heavy vinyl, 180 grams. Um, it's always a gatefold. And in the inside, they have like um, unreleased pictures that uh, of the sessions. And um, it's just amazing stuff. Really, really cool. And um, anywhere from Art Blakey to Donald Byrd, you know, it's really, really cool. Uh, I think my... Um, love for jazz was fostered when I was actually a very young child. Um, my, uh, my, my parents used to like jazz, but my uncle who used to babysit me for the first couple of years of my life, he was a huge John Coltrane fan. And he would play Coltrane while babysitting me. And um, that went on for the first few years of my life. And it I guess seeps in. somewhere in the ether, it just stuck, yep. you know, like, um, and that's, you know, and then when I got, when I was in my twenties, I really got back into it. You know, I, I started really getting into it. And now, you know, that's, that's a long time ago. And, um, and that's how I ended up with the jazz and the metal. I do have a lot of hip hop. I do have a lot of reggae. I have, you know, pretty much every style outside of like, you know, white national music or some crazy <laughs> shit like that. Um, you know, and and classic. I just don't know, I don't know anything about classical music, so you won't see that. But I'm very open to most. You know, I got Michael Jackson records. I don't care. You know, well, I grew I up with that one. That, that, that's interesting because I, I I was going to ask you. You know, out of everything that you've got, what do you think is the uh, most uncharacteristic? You know, people who know you. You're you're a metal singer. I guess it's right. Michael Jackson. But maybe you could tie that into the fact that Eddie it, it Van could be. I mean, I, I, ha I have, I have like, um, even like uh, electronica from the from the nineties. I got like drum bass stuff. I got um, some house music. You know, I never got rid of it because I, it is dated now. Clearly, it's yeah. dated. I'm sure it doesn't sound. But I haven't gotten around to like getting rid of it. And then sometimes I pull out something. And I'm like, this is actually really cool. And I. I think with anybody who collects records for a long time, um, when I was, I got into it when I was a very young person. I was maybe 11 years old when I started buying What records. was your first they one, were, first record? The first record I bought, and I still have it, it's Manfred Mann's Earth Band and a record called Solar Fire. And um, Manfred Mann's Earth Band was kind of big in Europe, but not a big deal here in the States. Um, until blinded by the light, I think. And um, but solar fire 
when I was a kid, I always used to see that record in the in the record store. And it has like, you know, picture of the universe and like bright red colors. And I thought, man, this is trippy. And I was always drawn to that cover. And I was like, one day I was like, I, I'm just going to buy it. I already at that time was listening to music, like consciously listening and, you know, and then after that, the floodgates opened. Then I started actively buying. Then I bought like uh, Shake Your Booty from Frank Zappa, Deep Purple, um, uh, Made in Japan. Like I was, uh, I bought um, Queen, uh, Jazz, anything. That, so back then there was obviously no direction in terms of, oh, I just like metal or just like that. I just like music that, you know, as a kid, you just, you know, you see things, especially like, I remember I was so enamored with the Frank Zappa cover of Shake Your Booty that I put the cover up in the room, in my room, before I went to school. So when I came home and I went into my room, the first thing I saw was Zappa looking at me with that shake get up, right? And, and I did the same thing with Venom, Black Metal. Same exact thing, <laughs> but I wasn't, it wasn't a conscious thing. I was just reflecting later on in life. I was like, man, the weird shit that I used to right. do as a kid, right? Because I mean, when we're kids, that's what we do. You know, you right. build these little, but, little shrines to your favorite bands. Right. And, um, and that also speaks of how important artwork is and how impressionable people can be. Yeah. And what kind, you know, like, King Crimson, for instance, uh, uh, the first one, right? In right. the court. Oh, well, I mean, yeah. what a, what a Amazing challenge. artwork, right? Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's super iconic. Even if people don't know the music on that record, I think they people have the seen the cover. Yeah. Right. right, right. So that's another thing, I think, um, especially with record collectors, people are like, oh, yeah, you know, uh, you just, you know, make a big stink about, you know, the, 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 the format of the, of the media uh, and so on. But yeah, I do because it, it's big. It's not this big. It's right. this big. Right. And you hold it and there's, I don't know, I make a connection to it. Like, I don't know. I am sure you do as well. Right? Oh, absolutely. So, all right. So you get something new now. And you rip open that shrink wrap or are you like me where you slice it and you pull out the record and you don't look at the gatefold and has it work with you? So here's what I do. Here's, here's my technique, right? I try to um, detach the hype stickers. Once I detach the hype stickers, I put them on my table, my coffee table so that they're not on the sticky side. Then I get the shrink wrap open. Then I get one of my um, sleeves, the, the, you know, the, the, yep. the protective poly sleeves. sleeves, the poly sleeves, the one with the flaps. Oh. I put the record in there. And then I slap the, the, the hype sticker on top of the poly sleeve. So now I can actually look at the record, still have the, 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 the hype sticker, and I mean, yes, maybe it's losing in value, but I do want to interact with my records. I've never been a person that just buys stuff and they're like, all right, just going to have this now and then wait for a rainy day. I've never been like that. You know, that's, that's it's nice. like, it's cool if you can do that. And I'll know people who do, who buy like doubles of everything they get. And then one is for use and the other is for um, storage. And that's what it yeah. is. It's storage. I mean, well, I mean, because, you know, I'm not going to live to the day when I sell any of this. So it's basically, no. you know, what am I doing with it? I might it's as well. Yeah. But mentally, I can't get myself to open these things. I, you know, like I, I just got these, these recent, I mean, they're not recent anymore, but these, uh, where is it? Like the Alan Vega reissues. They came out a couple of years back, you know? Right. So here it is. It's still in the shrink with the you know the shrink yes. is still on the hype is still on i have no idea what the gatefold looks like but isn't that why we have discogs that's we right can just, we can just yeah. look and see what someone else posted. <laughs> that, right <laughs> right <laughs> yeah yeah I mean, and i totally get it i totally get it and i'm like i'm 
um, I just developed that, you know, that technique that I just explained to you just so I have a peace of mind and I can actually interact with the record. Right. Well, um, I mean, and I, I like the way you phrase it, interact with the record, because I mean, it really, it's, right. it's a full immersion on that. You know, it's the sleeve, it's the liner notes, it's the everything, everything that comes with it. Yeah. 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 And, and that's the cool thing about, for instance, um, like uh, going back to the Blue Note reissues, right? And Blue Note records in general. Like last night I was listening to, let's see if I can, if you can see that. I was listening to, now I have, can you see me? Oh yeah, yeah. You're still coming in. Coltrane Quartet, um, Japanese reissue. Right. So I was listening to that, and um, now I have something completely else on 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 my screen, which I need to. Oh, I see. I, I, I can I can stall if you need to. Uh, but you're you're coming in crystal clear here. But right, right. so yeah, you, are you you're back? You, you can see. Yeah, I'm back. So oh. so this I was listening to, um, and I was reading these liner notes, and they were super super interesting, and. You know, I mean, now I know things about this record and that I didn't know before and why this record is even more amazing than I thought it was, <laughs> you know? Right, right. So to me, that's that's an experience. Uh, when my two-year-old son is asleep, I go upstairs, I pick up what I need to pick up and, um, and you know, maybe I have a glass of wine and I listen to this. And, and, and that's like, bliss to me yeah um it's the ultimate form of happiness by myself you know like uh -huh. i'm not you know an anti-social person who just needs to be by himself <laughs> obviously when you have children you can't do that but do that. but um you know in terms of like spending some quality time outside of maybe like working out or something else this is it right like, you know and it's a form of meditation as well right you yeah. kind of get into you know a dialogue with the with the with the music if it's if it speaks to you obviously exactly now when you when you i mean you're listening to a full lp you're not i mean not every so often maybe you're just going to put on one song but right. for the most part to get that full on experience you're going to put on the whole record what happens if after side one you get distracted or you know something ha do you come back and put on side two or is your immersion completely broken and no. You no, put no. on something else. Sometimes, I, I, sometimes, yeah, sometimes what I do, uh, you know, like at most people, I work from home a lot. Um, what I'll do is like in between uh, meetings, um, I'll put on a record and, you know, I'll look at the time and all right, I'll probably have like enough time for side one. I'll get into side one to decompress whatever in between meetings or just, you know, after completing a task or something. And then I'm like, all right, and I leave the record. And then it's cool to come back to it as well. It's like, oh, okay, I still have to listen to side two. And it's kind of a cool thing um, because it breaks it up and you have fresh ears. So that's a cool thing as well to me, you know. Um, the one thing that I don't ever do is, um, is get a record and just not visit visit it um because i have the mp3s or something right so i do listen to music on on on, on 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 in my car and on the go but i will never buy a record and be like hey I, you know i just got the mp3s and it's not gonna you know and then it just kind of gets lost it never happens yeah um yeah. and especially with the other like with jazz stuff i don't have mp3s they don't come with mp3s right so i gotta sit my butt down and listen to it right if i want to listen here Exa and and um enjoy yeah right and once i know it somewhat that's when i start playing it like maybe you know uh, uh during the day even if my son runs around or whatever i'll just be playing it and it'll be in the background mm -hmm. but that for that to happen i kind of have to know it and i want to know it so yeah. you know that's a diff that's another additional scenario so all right i mean i i you know if the things come with the download cards um, you know, I'll always, I'll always put it on the phone, listen to it in the car, listen to it, you know, like you when I'm yeah. waiting to whatever it is. 
And, um, you know, but when they don't, it gives you something to look forward to at the end of the day when you get home. And it's like, oh, yeah, right. I got to put on that record. Because, you know, I listened to it. Yes, I listened to it the day before. And there was that one track that just stuck in my mind. But I don't have yeah. access to it necessarily. I mean, you could always, everything is on YouTube and I guess Spotify yeah, you, these days. Right, right, right. You can find it. Right, right. But, you know, it, it gives you that motivation to like, okay, now is the record time. Now is record o'clock. Right, right, right. When I come home and I just yeah. put it on and zone out. Right, know? right. That's great. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's perfect. It's To me, it's like, you know, the, 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 the cool thing about this whole vinyl resurgence and stuff is that I find people like yourself and like, you know, there is actually, there, there, you can share your experiences. But on top of that is, um, you know, you feel kind of like, you've done this. I've done this all my life, basically, since I was, you know, I mean, when I was a child, I remember I got into sports. I got into, I don't know, books. I had an aquarium and then I had music. That's it. That's like, and then the minute I discovered music, everything else took a backseat. And, and then that was it. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, it controlled my life in every aspect. Yeah. And so, in this, it, it's cool that you find other people who went through this through a similar journey, and you know who had like that one moment, and then it started getting into records and music in, in general, and it's a cool thing, right? Because you kind of like you now we can we can completely be living on our on our own little island, you know. You, you, you know, with most you, of us have get, been for the last year, right? And, and I mean if anything this quarantine thing proved us i mean if you don't want to leave your house you can get people to bring you everything you need and as long as you pay your bills this thing just keeps on going That's but it. i think i think um yeah like i said it's cool to connect to people who had similar journeys and who feel and feel kind of connected because they had similar experiences and it's a it's it's everybody's still unique. It's like, you know, you had a different journey than I did and everybody, you know, but you arrive at this place where you can appreciate similar things and, and, and it all connects with, with, you know, records. So with exactly. music in general. Right. So, and I mean, and that was really kind of the thing. goal of the goal of the show is, you know, we're not getting those experiences too much anymore, hanging out at a record job, hanging out at a record fair and just BSing right. with someone again, whether or not, you're into the same type of music, but you're into yes. music. You're both in a record store and you're both shopping. Right. And, you right. know, I mean, it's amazing how many conversations you can have just based on that, just around music. There's no right or I wrong mean, to it. No. And, and it's funny because um, when I was a teenager, most of my friendships were formed in record stores. They started in record stores, you know, because, you know, I was a metal kid or whatnot. And, you know, I met other like-minded people in the record store buying. I remember there was a ritual we had, me and my, a couple of my friends, we, I grew up in a town called Wiesbaden. And next to Wiesbaden is Mainz, which is actually in a different state. But it's it's only a bus ride away. It's that really, is, really this is Germany, yeah? This is in Germany. Okay. And the store in Mainz in the early 80s was called Rock Pile. And um they would get all every Saturday they would get new metal. And all the kids from Wiesbaden would go to Mainz to, to get the metal. And that's where you met other people who came from everywhere because that store had. I remember, you know, and I remember specifically conversations with people, like with kids, like, oh, he would say, ah, oh, I got this new band coming in, um, Exciter. You might have heard of them from the U.S. metal comps and stuff. They they coming out with a with a full length, and we're like, oh my god, really? Who's gonna Who's gonna be there early enough to get the, the a copy? Because he'd have like five copies, right? And then you know you you be going real early and to make sure, you know. And then be like, ah, oh, see, I got this. And then, you, you know, you are be in a store, you get the record, somebody's trying to get the same record. But then, you know, it was all cool. 
and they were little kids. I mean, like, I was, not little, but 15 year old kids, right? And what a time. Yeah. What a, what a crazy time. It's right? like record store but, day every single Saturday. Yeah. And now I was, um, uh, the other day I was watching a Netflix documentary on Blockbuster. I was just and, watching that too. Yeah. And I was like, wow, son of a bitch. People experience something that you and I experience in record stores. But with video. At Blockbuster, a video yeah. rental stores, right? And that's cool too. And I was like, and it was funny to see these people talk about it. And I was like, as I'm watching this, I'm like, this is quite familiar to me. I didn't yeah. experience the same type. I love music. I mean, movies, don't get me wrong. But it wasn't such a central part. You know, you'd go and, you know, you get movies and that, all right. But like, you know, the real passion was for records. So right. and, and music, right? Like, like the big passion, right? And um, and it was cool to see a whole other genre of entertainment with another medium that's so folk. experiencing something very similar, right? right? Such devoted so fans, was, right? And that's cool. And I was like, man. It's great, and, but then it made me a little sad because I'm like, yeah, it's sad that the, those everything is now online. Everything is so accessible. You really, really have to, and I make the same mistake, right? Sometimes I'm like, yeah, I'm just going to get this online. And then I'm like, you know, a record, for instance. I'm not bothering. But I'm glad when certain titles are only available in the store because I'll make my butt go into the store right. and buy records, you know, and that's cool. And it makes, and it's not because of anything other than to go out, talk to people, see what they're getting, you know, right. see, you know, it's a, it's a cool experience. And, um, and it breaks up this whole tunnel vision thing of like, Oh, okay. Just, buy now and click and it's in your cart and check out and the, and the mailman brings it to you. Right. And, and, and that's, that's kind of what got me. I mean, th- it was a combination of things that stopped me from buying records for a period of about 18 years. Yeah. I, first of all, the kids yeah. were growing up. The kids kind of took over this room and I had yeah. nowhere to sit and listen to albums. So, you know, right. what I'm not going to buy it on CD and I'll listen yeah. to it in the car. Right. But it was, uh, you know, it, also the fact that at that point, eBay was just starting to get really, really popular. And right. anything that, you know, the thrill was in the hunt. The thrill was going right. to the five record stores down in the city, you know, on a weekly basis. Like I'm going in, you know, every single week to see what new stuff they have. And now you can just look on eBay and, the, and, and get something from Japan and get something from, you know, from, from, from China, wherever it is. And it's all there. And it's like, it, it kind of lost, it lost the fun. Yeah. And, you know, now 18 years later, all, all that crap tripled in price, <laughs> you know, I should. Right, right, right. <laughs> so the other thing is, um, I think, uh, like there was, there was a, a time when I was buying a lot of limited editions, like in color variants and such. And, you know, there was a time seven, eight years ago, maybe as well, where um, labels would, you know, put out 50 or 100 of a, of, of a certain color variant. And you'd have to be online first, and then it'll sell out within minutes. And, you know, that kind of brought some excitement to the whole online buying thing. It also brought a lot of disappointment for a lot of people, I think, when sure. they didn't get the color variant that they wanted. Um, I've been kind of uh, moving away from that um, year by year. I care very much you know, less about, all right. It's cool to have a very limited thing, don't get me wrong. I mean, it, it's, it certainly is a cool thing to have a record that exists in that very particular format only with right. 100 50 copies, copies or 100 50 copies. or whatever it is. That's a cool thing. But I'm not so glued to my screen anymore and, you know, waiting for the thing to go up yeah. for sale. I'm like, yeah. If I get it, that's cool. If I catch it, and if I don't catch it, that's also very cool because you can there's live a million with it. of things. <laughs> you know, like, right. So, right. 
you've got a constant right. flow of like new metal. And I don't, I don't mean new and you like, you know, new metal, but, right, I, right, right, right. Yeah. but new metal. I mean, you know, you're always posting new, but how do you hear about these bands? Um, so, uh, there's a lot of stuff. Um, I, I do get a lot of emails <laughs> from labels there are certain labels that I actually follow that I, you know, that put out bands that um, are interesting to me. Um, like Riding Easy Records. Riding Easy, um, Profound Lore, um, Relapse, whatnot, you know. So they put out, and you'll see uh, me posting a lot of death metal, some Doom, Stoner stuff, once in a while, some Black Thrash stuff, you know, not so much Thrash. And there's a re reason behind it is because if you, I, I play that music and I create that music. So to me, it's very difficult. I can always um, appreciate it and I can give people their props. That's not my problem at all. The one thing though that, um, that I have a hard time with is to really get into it. Like, you know, like, cause it's like a little boring to me because I'm like, yeah, I'm already doing that. Right. Not exactly that, but, but something with, like that. Within those lines. You know? right. with that, yeah. So to me, it's not as interesting. You know, on, on top, I know most of the people that, you know, are important in that genre, they're my friends, you know, um, whether it's the German people or, or the U.S. bands, you know, I, you know, I've played with most of those bands, mm -hmm. you know. I have connections to all of those bands in some weird ways. So it's like, okay, I can't really become like super, super fan. Like my fandom doesn't go into that. But if, if it's like a band that I don't know, or like it's a genre that I, I don't do and create myself, it's, it's easier for me to be like, oh, wow. Because I can't play Stoner um, yeah. metal or, or, or Doom. It's I mean, not I my lane. I, I guess it's almost you know, like bringing your work home with you to a certain extent. You know, exactly, I mean, you, you, right. you work this, so I don't want to right. live this at home. You know, I mean, again, yeah. you know, being a singer in a band is is certainly not a conventional job, so to speak. But right, 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 right. it's you know, but but it's but it's it's still work. It's still a job. At the, you know, at the it, it's, it, right, and um, people don't think that you know, uh, like. You know, when when we do Exumer, it's 100% Exumer. Like, I don't do anything else. Like, when we go on tour, that's all we do, right? When when we write a record, that's that's pretty much all we do. When I lock down on 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 um, on writing uh, lyrics, then you know I take time off from everything else, right? Mm -hmm. Because I kind of like. So I I did go to you know, to college, I have a master's degree in social work and I do have another job that I like a, a day job that I do, but um, it's, it's a, I arranged, we all arranged the whole band arranged their other work around the band. It's not, it's not the, the, the band is around the, it's not like, Oh, we'll just do Zoomer on the side and then, right. You know, we, <laughs> and then when we have time, well, I mean, when we have time, we'll just go on on, on the road. It's right. You're not, not weekend possible. warriors. You're actually you're committed to the band. Right. Yeah. Right. So that's why, like you said, it's it's very intense. So I sit down and listen to another thrash record it takes a lot <laughs> of me right. because I could be listening to John Coltrane or I right. could be listening to I don't know. Electric Wizard's new record, you know, yeah. or, or a Goblin record or whatever. Stuff that I don't do. So, um, like you said, it's a little bit of bringing your work home and you kind of like, eh. There are good records though in that genre and I do support a lot of the younger bands that speak to me. Um, they usually are more like Black Thrash. Mm -hmm. um, what, what I mean by Black Thrash is more dirt, dirtier vocals uh, the riffs are a little dirty or it's not clean and polished. It's not so you know, heavy on the bass, but it's, you know, it's, it doesn't sound like a throwback, but it has the vibe of like it permeate, permeates some of the eighties, you know, stuff, 
stuff that kind of like does that dance between lo-fi 80s but then still you know recorded today right. still clear and you know powerful but kind of dirty that's what i like so um and about two or three records of that genre or at least one of them uh, makes it to my top 10 every year like yeah, the- i think last year was um I know the year before in 2019, it was um, High Command's record that was on Southern Lord. Mm-hmm. And um, I think Occult Burial was, uh, was that made it to my top 10 last year. The question so is, it, it's usually. Can, can you, can you read, can you read the band names? Or, or the fonts? Read the band names? You know, like those fonts on some of those bands are like, they're like branches. Oh, that's more, that's, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, you're talking about more black metal stuff. Oh, but, okay, um, all right. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah all right. No, no, no. Black thrash uh, and, you know, the, that, the stuff that I'm talking about is, yeah, you can, you can actually, it's not, can, it's, it's actually legible. Actual letters. Yeah. <laughs> and, okay. and then you can read it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's some black metal stuff that's interesting. It's just not a genre that I like. Uh, I like, um, a lot of the stuff that I like is from the early nineties through the early two thousands in that genre. Um, and obviously the first wave of black metal, Venom, uh, Merciful Fate, um, Celtic Frost, Hellhammer. That to me is all my original black metal. And that just kills everything, you know, like, I mean, I mean, at what point did, you know, I mean, when we were growing up, I, I'm, I'm assuming you're, probably close to my age but when we were growing up metal was metal it was just it was metal. metal yeah it there was, was just metal. metal yeah and I, I don't at what point did they all these 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 sub genres and categories come out i think i think i think what really happened when that really took place was in the 2000s after all these twists and turns that metal made like from you know, when it, you know, when you had the sub pop and the grunge okay. and then the new metal and the da, da, da. And right. then by, by the early 2000s, it turned, it, it became so fragmented that people just held on to these, to these genres. Yeah. It's all because of the internet. Absolutely right. I was, the internet killed. Right. Right. I mean, when you, when you, when you, when you break it down, it, it does make sense because now you can really just classify Absolutely. everything and everywhere. Yeah. Again, when we were growing up, it was it was oh, you're into metal, and metal was you know, it was metal, right, right? Metal was metal. Metal was Twisted Sister. Metal was Venom. Absolutely. And metal yeah. was Merciful Fate and Maiden and Priest. Absolutely. Right. It was all metal. And so it's all metal. And um, and then it's funny enough, you know. I come from a gener- generation where all the hard rock stuff was considered the metal of that time. Right. So like, like, the the Scorpions, like the Scorpions and UFO, which is hard rock, really, was the heavy stuff right. of the 70s. Yeah. Right? Because preceding that was like the Purple Black Sabbath and stuff like that. But it wasn't... M- quite as heavy well it was heavy it's still heavy you know right right. then you had like the scorpions and bands that broke like the second uh part of the of the 70s that those bands were considered metal right yeah and now even priest motor priest um maiden their first time was in 80 but priest and, and and motorhead they put out records in the 70s i mean i you know i mean so those are seventies bands, and that was the metal, right? Of of that time, right? I mean, but to me, to me, it's all it's, it's all, all the metal. same. I mean, it's all metal. Yeah. And the funny thing, and then I would listen to a band like Queen, and to me, it's like, man, I can hear metal in there, you know, yeah. or hard rock in there. There's a lot of hard driving riffs in there, yeah, you know. So if you revisit a lot of that stuff from the seventies. And even like late sixties, it has a lot of stuff that never made it really big. Have they have very metally elements? Um, oh, yeah, so, yeah. 
go put on blue cheer. You know, I, I mean, right. boom. It's heavy as hell, right? That's yeah. it. You know, I mean, what so, was that? 69 blues? It was the first rest. 69, 68, 69. 60, 67, actually. I think. Wow. Yeah. So that is some. Um, so, and I listened to all of it because once I started, I didn't discriminate. Right. I was like, I like this and I like music and whatever. And then, you know, I, I actually like punk and hardcore before I like metal a lot because like in the late seventies, punk made it was a big thing. And I was like, I got into sex pistols, UK subs, stiff little fingers, all that stuff in the late seventies, early eighties. Right? right. And, and then I got into maiden motorhead priest and stuff. Um, pretty much almost the same time, but it was, I remember very distinctly when you talk about more extreme music, it was punk and hardcore before metal. Okay. And then it was metal. And then, but I never, and I continued to buy punk records. Right. And I remember when the first Discharge record came out, I was like, this is brutal. You right. know, like it was great. I was like, I didn't care. Like they didn't look like metal people, but it didn't matter to me. Yeah. But you see the mindset is the music is what matters. That's it. Not what the genre is, how they look like, what they wear. It's do they can I emotionally connect to this? That's it. And it's like that with any with any genre. I mean, there's some stuff that like you wouldn't think, you know, someone might find surprising to find in your recollection, my recollection, but it hits you. It's it's that's that's where it is, you know. It's just oh yeah. You hear it, you feel it, you experience it, and yeah, why can't I like it? You know, there's no reason not to I like, like it. Any, yeah. As long as I can connect to it and there is like a real connection and I can feel something genuine that speaks to me, that's right. that's my that's my um, measuring stick, you know, mm -hmm. my yardstick. Right. right. I'm right. like, now nah, nah, I'm sold. I was listening. Um, I bought this record by this band called Black Pumas. I didn't know that they're up for a Grammy. To me, it's 70s soul. I'm a huge Curtis Mayfield fan. Mm -hmm. I, he's my favorite singer of all time. Curtis Mayfield is. Singer. Not right. shouter, not nothing. Just singer. Singer. Mm -hmm. Um. And that it's it's like that. I, it connects to me. It speaks to me like old Curtis Mayfield records, and I love that record. Right, right. Black Pumas. Yeah, you know, I stumbled over them in, on the internet. I didn't care what you. Like, yeah, it's and again, just amazing music. That's where the internet wins because. Right. We're now exposed to, I mean, it might be too much music, but right, you, right, can, right. you can put your finger on anything and right. see if you like, you know, again, when we were, you had to run out every Saturday, go right. to another country, take a bus to another country to right, go right. and hang out with a bunch of metalheads waiting for the next record. You know, for right. me, it was all about finding that, you know, one other kid who was somewhat into what you're into and trading day. Hey, could you record? Here's a blank tape. Can you record this? You know, the, the deal right, right. for me, and, you know, and that's what it was. It was just, you know, different time. Now it's, it's all over. It, it exploded. I mean, my son who's 19, uh, no, he's 20 now. I mean, years ago would turn, he, he has exposed me to more music in, in a short period of time than yeah you know, the majority of my life, it's just, oh yeah, yeah you, you, you'll like here. He'll send a link. You'll like this. Check it out. You'll like this. Check it out. You'll, oh, if you like this, you'll like this. Check it out. Wow. That's amazing. Yeah. I'm waiting for, I'm going to wait <laughs> 15, 20 years for my son to do that to me. But... <laughs> he'll get there. Listen. Believe me, he'll get there. And it's, it's an amazing, you know, my daughter as well. I mean, you know, she's a little, little bit, it's their music tastes are, are, are pretty i mean there are overlaps but they're you know pretty separate yeah. and you know he likes a lot of the extreme stuff he likes music that challenges him whether it's noise or you know a lot of the yeah. sub 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 metal genres that i can't even identify with and you know am i holding right. the record up the right way because i can't read the, yeah. the, the the name of the band yeah. and, yeah. and my daughter she you know she's all about like you know melody she'll power pop and you know like you know punk and, and stuff like that and it's you know i mean you can see where they 
you know, got things yeah. you know, where, where, where I influenced them and then they just went off right. and went on their own, which is which That's is cool. great, you know, yeah. and that will happen. That will happen with your yeah. son. Right? Yeah, I mean, my son is my son is uh, he'll 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 you know, we'll talk about stuff. Um, my wife and I will be like. And now he picks up stuff like, oh, daddy, can you put on Pink Floyd? He doesn't know what Pink Floyd is, but he'll say Pink Floyd. So I got him a little T-shirt. Now he's rocking oh, look at that. Pink Floyd shirt. He's two. He's two and some change, you know, so it's cool. It's he'll, like he'll, he'll get putting there. those seeds in there, you know. That's right. Um, you know, and then and and I mean, I, I'm, I'm very happy that, you know, he's grown up with 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 that sonic experience that yeah. i i was able to grow up as well and he right. knows he'll go into my record room and he'll pull out a record and say this is cool <laughs> it's like wow you know it's it's an amazing thing for him yeah. you know yeah for me it, it really um, is just passing it on you know absolutely i have to break right on well th this is fantastic this uh, hanging out was terrific. Thank you so much. I mean, we were, we were chatting for like an hour. So uh, yeah, yes, thank you yes. so, so much. So let me make my little, uh, my little wrap up comments okay. here and then we will okay. officially say goodbye. So friends, if you like the show, this is like standard operating procedure for all these YouTube shows, which I'm, I'm told sure, sure, sure. I have to do, but whatever. Yeah. Um, okay. So wait, I have to get this straight here. If you like what you see, um, subscribe to the channel and like the video and comment. We love your comments. I respond to them all. And um, I think that's it. I think that's it. All right. Oh, and we will have uh, all of Mem's information in the description, uh, any links, and we'll set up a Spotify playlist for some of the things that we spoke about. And Mem Von Stein from Exumer, thank you so much for hanging out on this day and uh, I'll, I'll I'll see you around town, uh, you know, at, at right. Newland Groove. <laughs> right. All Take right. Care, Thank you very, very much.